Hi, Egg, gangsters and gumshoes, and welcome to an exciting session of Blood from a Stone. My name is Philip, and I'm the Dreadmaster, except I haven't even changed my name to it because I'm all over the place today. You guys, I don't even know. Um, joining me are some wonderful players. Say hello, players. Hello, hello players. players. Hello. hello. Dreadmaster, can't believe I didn't do that. I'm, I'm in a bad mood. Well, it's, he's going to take it out on you guys is what he'll do. Um, I'm so excited for tonight's game. Things got wild last week. We That's had awesome. two horror surges, one of which was guaranteed uh, to help out our Kickstarter. And then we had a dread storm. The dread clock is set back at 13. All is calm after such madness. This also was a notable dreadstorm because uh, it was one of, I think it was one of our more decisive victories for the home side. Uh, basically the home domain of dread of Heistelis, uh pretty utterly repelled an incursion for Brock at base 95. Um, and all that, all that happened was, uh, was just one dude named Mr. Rawlings got sucked up into a spaceship and talked to an old familiar, well, not an old familiar face. She has no face now. She's a brain in a jar. But speaking of old familiar faces, everyone say hello to Laura, one of the OG players in this game. Hi, Laura. Hi, Laura. Uh, Hi, Laura. Uh, Hi. Which is very exciting. I, I sort of meant like everyone out of the world say hello, but also, yes, you guys all <laughs> say hello. If you haven't already, which would have been rude. Um... <laughs> But no, that's so. I'm so. I'm so happy. I I love having you in this horror game. I feel it is so your wheelhouse, and it's always so delightful. And there's a special place in my heart for old Alice Sheedy, who I do think I killed the coolest way that I've ever killed someone in a game, because it was so mean and so out of nowhere. It but was enough very of... upsetting, but it was cool. Set <laughs> the tone. Yeah, that's it. Really, it's like okay, here's what we're doing. <laughs> Um, so, a few things to talk about before we jump into this. Uh, first of all, I want to mention, um, a big thanks to Brininger and Minnesota Twins for donating a bunch of subs in our past couple, uh, games and even outside of them, which is so kind. Um, I want to mention, uh, we have a new animated emote. It says, noir, ooh, like a, like a light noir. and it's black and white and it's noir, ooh. Sweet. So anyway, uh, that is our tier one emote for anyone who likes to use it. We do also, of course, have um, other emotes such as the the, uh, the horror surge and uh, uh, Maisie. Gotta have Maisie in there. And uh, what's the other one for this one? Oh yeah, it's uh, player death. So we got a lot of dark, got a lot of darkness because that's what this game's all about. And it brings me so much happiness because I am a sick person. Um, I also, before we get into other business. Thanks to wonderful suggestion by Dan. It is time to open the calendar. All right. All right. So I believe we have six has been opened. I see six, six dice there. So we got seven, lucky number seven. Lucky box seven, here we go. You will see it before I do. It is a, ooh. And? A, a percentile. Oh. A percentile die of the uh, of the dragon flame variety. Very exciting. Yeah, this is the kind of stuff that goes on now, Laura. This, uh, you, you've been away. You've been away three weeks after a witch light wrapped up, and the channel's very different. So yeah, <laughs> we've Ooh, gone off the rails. Fancy. <laughs> you roll, and there's the oh. ten there, and then you can roll these. T I don't have a d10 oh, yeah. of it, so never mind. It's it's just a percentile on its own. They'll eventually all be opened, but it's going delightfully slower because I don't play games every day yet. Um, so, all that out of the way, this will be our last uh, call to action on this on a Friday night because this is the final Friday in which our Kickstarter for Long Lost Noir is active. So... Please, uh, if you want to uh, support the channel and support this Kickstarter we're doing, please go over to Kickstarter. Uh, if you've already donated uh, or you can't donate, that's totally fine. But please tell your friends. Uh, try to get as many people onto this as possible. We are we are very close to so being close. able to uh, to fund this. Um, we are looking for seventy five hundred dollars. We are now at seventy one twenty seven. So we're like we're very, very close. close to the end. Um, some very exciting stuff. We're really uh, really hoping we can. Uh, 
can get this going and get all this artwork done for a bunch of the kinds of classes and races you are actually going to see in action tonight. Um, we also, uh, we, uh, one of our, one of our bigger ticket items, uh, we've had some bigger ticket items or things. One of the bigger ticket items we had was actually to like name the book, um, a la, uh, kind of like put, put a name on the book, a la how it's like, you know, like a Volo's Guide to Monsters or Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes. And I'm very excited to reveal right now that the name going on the book is crypto nft scam dot biz present no uh that's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> sounds so legit crypto nft scam dot biz um this is lo long lost noir <laughs> <laughs> presents long lost noir <laughs> Oh boy! No, we have a where it's in it's in it's in process. I've actually heard the direction that is being chosen on for that by the person who backed that level, and it's going to be, uh, it's it's a very uh, I will say this about all the things I've heard uh, for all the various things because we've kind of uh, we've done high level rewards to name um, characters in or name things in in the other game and to name characters and to create you know uh, like that that one of the horror surges last week was was from a Kickstarter reward and such. Uh, and the options people have given have been so cool and so, like, people have really, like, embraced the spirit of, like, noir stuff and it's been really fun. And I think the, the name here and the, the, because it's not just the name, it's also kind of like the, the running commentary, the in-universe author of the book. Um, you know, like the way that Xanathar and Xanathar's Guide to Everything right. is, like, just making sarcastic comments about adventurers the whole time. So, uh, we have a really cool thing of that coming and, uh. If we can just get this thing funded, just pass the little things. So yes, please, please, please share that with friends. Uh, let everyone know this is the last time we will bother you about it because it ends at uh, early in the morning um, on Thursday Pacific time. So like, like mid morning Eastern time. Uh, but so basically kind of like just, just kind of we're in the final few days here. So please, last time we'll bother you about that, but please, please, please send people to that. Um, if you have social media, like, say things on social media, you know, take a break from, like, you know, all the hateful vitriol that everyone puts out there, right? Or, or you know, direct it our way to, to cause people to go see what this outrageous yeah. Kickstarter talk is. about how so offensive, offensive our Kickstarter is, because that's the best way to get eye, uh, yeah, eyeballs. And, again, just put in all of the big buzzwords about the sponsorship, crypto. NFT scam uh, to keep going with other things that were big at the Super oh, Bowl um, this year. Electric cars, hard seltzers, um, the blockchain, tests. blockchain, <laughs> chain block, cock block. Just put in anything you want to that will be hashtags. Upsetting. <sighs> Uber Eats. You're doing great, Philip. That being said, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really into the idea of someone, like, like getting mad at someone for chain blocking them. Like, someone's trying to do something with their chain, and you keep chain blocking me. I shouldn't think that's as funny as I do, and I really like, like, that's, like, I like this so much. All right, well, enough of that, about uh, some nonsense. Um... Let's talk about what happened last week, which is basically that Sister Mercy and Mr. Rawlings, who came to Heistelis from Merkshire, have met up with some other individuals, uh, notably Dr. Soup, a professor, and Igneous, a gumshoe. Uh, they escaped with this pair from Blunderland, the palatial residence just outside the city of one Judge Blunder, who uh, Igneous and Dr. Soup actually know Judge Blunder, and they know what his deal is. Uh, Sister Mercy has yet to see that creature. I hope, even despite how not freaked out she's been by monsters thus far, upon seeing Judge Blunder, she might be frightened. Um, but uh, after a daring escape, uh, Dr. Soup had a very interesting encounter with a handsome stranger who stepped, unbeknownst to Dr. Soup, out of the very impassable mists. This drifter told Dr. Soup he'd be seeing him again, and uh, Dr. Soup would maybe do him a favor, and then he healed Dr. Soup considerably. Um, the group then went back to Igneous's office, where they met Igneous's office mate, and that include Igneous. He'd never met her either. Her name was uh, Hattie Ford. Uh, she was a smoking one uh, explorer. Um, 
I will say that Mr. Rawlings came to some very interesting conclusions and deductions about the nature of the domains, about what has power in one domain and the other. Whether or not he's correct about these things remains to be seen, but he he had some pretty interesting conjectures, and Dr. Soup, you certainly followed them. Sister Mercy, you, you kind of understood what he was saying. Um, in particular, the idea that in this domain, this book you're holding, that was a tome of dread in Merkshire, is kind of just a book. Kind of is, is just the lyrics to songs. They don't seem to have the same effect here. It's very strange. But these discussions, uh, and also Sister Mercy did reveal um, the mist she keeps within her arm, which... Hattie found particularly interesting being a smoking one. But these conversations were short-lived when not one, but two gangs came after you. The first, because Hattie killed a spider, and Crawley's creepies come for you if you kill spiders in Heistelis. The second, I don't know, because, because who doesn't want to see a bunch of ventriloquist dummies with little guns trying to shoot the place up? Um, I don't. They creep me out. Dr. Soup managed to to sort of pit these two forces against each other. Um, Sister Mercy and Igneous uh, escaped out of fire escape. Mr. Rawlings and Hattie went to the roof where they beheld, as the horror surged to the point of a full-on dreadstorm, a flying saucer emerging from the mists above. A incredibly charismatic voice uh, tried to entice the pair to come with this ship. Mr. Rawlings took his place aboard and was beamed up. Um, some other things happened, which has no relevance to what any of you were doing. Um, Hattie kind of made her, she swung her way down off the building. Um, Dr. Soup suggested everyone can go to his, um, to his office for some safety. That's where we will resume in just a few moments. But first, I will read tonight's invocation. <sighs> I like this one, actually. I used to think the world was divided into good people and bad people. That you could pin responsibility for evil on certain definite people and punish the guilty. I'm still going through the motions. Let's begin. The rain still falls here in Heistelis. Um, Igneous, was it your plan to commandeer the vehicle? Oh, that was my plan. That was Dr. Soup's plan. Okay, so you guys are down there. There is a car. Um, if you're going to attempt that, you may do so, but there still are some ventriloquist dummy drivers. <clears throat> Um, and upon sort of seeing you all moving to the car, they appear to be aware of an altercation. Um, the car is not a drive yet, so if you want to jump to it, you can. But at this point, there's a there's a sense of right. Um, yeah, let me put myself back into the place we were just at. We've just come out fight. Yeah, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna adrenaline's rolling. We're just gonna try to throw this person out and, and speed away. Okay, so the the dummy screams. Step on it! Um, Dr. Soup, uh, go ahead and roll, um, go ahead and roll an initiative for me. Sure. Uh, 18. 18. All right. Um, the, the car door is closed. The window is open. There's a ventriloquist dummy with a, you know, newsboy cap. Uh, kind of like, you know, head turning, mm -mm, eyes going, rawr, 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 uh, screaming, step on it, step on it. Uh, you run to the car door. What would you like to do? It's occurring to me. I was going to say, like, I just want to pull him out of the car, but it's occurring to me that I can't do that. I'm three foot two. That is true. You're you're not much taller than these guys. I mean, you could you can try to reach over. He'll have He'll have advantage on a grapple check to get away, but you could try it. Um, How big is the car? It's a full size car. I just imagine again, got, like short an, round pedals. It's an going on. it's an opposite of a clown car situation in which a big car has a kind of like not impressive number of dummies come out of it. Like they have like 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 you see the dummies and like they're trying to pile out and you're like you're like you could have fit up you could have fit a bunch more in there. Um, um, no, I'm gonna try to. Um, 
Which side uh, am I coming from? The passenger side or the driver's side? Uh, you would be. They would have pulled up. Yeah, I guess you're coming from the passenger side. Okay. Then I want to try to, like, get there and throw open the door and just try to, like, basically slide across and just, like, so, like, kick him out the window or something like that. Okay, go ahead and make a grapple check for that if you're trying to, like, throw the person up. Uh, he goes, step on it! Uh, suddenly, Dr. Soup opens the car, slides across. I guess he should roll a... He'll roll an acrobatics. <sighs> Athletics, right? Uh, it is athletics to grapple, sadly, yes. That's a, that's a big six. A six. Unfortunately, he begins, like, slap fighting Dr. Soup. Like, ah, ah, hey, hey, step on it again. And uh, Dr. Soup, uh, that's your action used to movement. Um, yeah. He is, uh, he's using his action. Wait. Yeah. Can I, can I use my bonus action? to be on a deadline to use an object and to just try to pull the keys out of the ignition. Ooh, okay, sure. Um, make a, make a sleight of hand check. It'll be same sure. sort of, same sort of situation for that. It's nine. <laughs> a nine. He, he manages to like slap your hand away. Um, yeah, yeah. Dr. Soup, your perception's only 12, right? That's correct. Uh, okay, so he he screams, step on it again, is his action. He's going to put the car in gear and grab the steering wheels. Uh, and then on their initiative count, the two down by the pedals say, you heard him! And one of them is going to just push down on the pedal. And the other one goes, he said step on it, not push on it! Um, but the car begins to move forward. Um, Igneous and Sister Mercy... Uh, uh, you're standing there uh, at this at this time as the car is beginning to move with the with the uh, passenger door slinging open and Doctor Soup within. Um, is there anything either of you would like to do? I will mention that Hattie is going to say, "I have some antiquities to see to. Maybe I'll find you all later." Um, she says, "Igneous, we'll we'll talk about cleanup costs because I think this is more your fault than mine." And then she whoosh, whips up into the sky and begins swinging away. Uh, always leaving just when things get interesting. Classic Explorer. Classic um, Explorer! Da, 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 the car. Yeah. <laughs> how, how far away is the car from me? Uh, actually, you and Sister Mercy should roll initiative as well. Oh. This is just to see the order in which things are happening. Nine. Yeah, okay, then that's easy. Uh, oh, uh, actually, negative one. Uh, Eight. Okay. Eight as well. There we go. Uh, then we'll say that she went, so she she swings away. Um, the car is now like 30 feet from you. It hasn't fully gotten up to speed. So you can you can run and, and get into it if you'd like. Might as well go give a super hand over there. And uh, I go run toward the vehicle. I will follow him because he seems to know this world better than I do. Okay, so basically the two of you can run to the car. Um, the passenger side door is hanging open. Uh, Igneous, uh, actually, you have a negative one to your dexterity. Uh, my page just disappeared. Yes. So in that case, yes, uh, Sister Mercy, you actually get to the car a little bit before he does. Okay. Um, and uh, so you, you've caught up to the car, and it's, you know, it's like, it's it, the car is basically just about to pick up the speed, so this is sort of your opportunity to sort of try to jump in or, or climb in or something. Uh, you see Dr. Soup sort of struggling with small things in the, in the front seat. Um, what would you like to do? And Igneous is not far behind me, right? Igneous is just behind you. Uh, just kind of puffing a little bit. Well, actually, Dr. Soup. Well, we'll get to that in a second. Go ahead. He's, I, I would be able to perceive that he's like probably heavier than I could pull, right? Yes. Or, he is much okay. heavier than you can pull. He, that okay, is, I, yeah, he's, he's a, then I will he's a say, chonky Dr. boy. <laughs> chonky boy. Uh, Dr. Soup, you need to slow down. Why am I, I going Russian? 
I don't know. That's Oksana. Oksana. I uh, yeah, I'm I'm sort of in the middle. I'm trying. Yeah, you're trying my patience is what you're doing. <laughs> okay. So Sister Mercy, the... you're running, what are you doing? I will uh try to enter the vehicle. Alright, make an athletics check. You have a disadvantage on this. Oh well, great. Because you're exhausted. I rolled I rolled a six. And I'm sorry, what was it? Athletics? Athletics. So it is uh uh it is a six. With a six, you try to sort of jump to the car, but you are unable to kind of like get up into it as it's moving. Um, you can attempt to like hang on to the side of it, which will require another athletics check, uh, or you can simply let it outpace you. I will let it outpace me. Understood. Igneous, it is your turn. Uh, I jump into the car. All right, you run to the car. Make an athletics check. So okay. this kind of boom, boom. Boom, 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 as you as you begin to flag a little bit, Sister Mercy. Eighteen. Then eighteen, you you jump into the passenger seat, no problem. And in fact, Sister Mercy, you see the side of the car just kind of go vroom as he, you know, this <laughs> heavy it, thing. It almost feels like if you wanted to, you could just like run into the car and flip it. <laughs> He's probably not All quite right, does, that yeah, that that hefty. Does but, the uh, car slow down after Igneous? jumps on no the car is like picking up picking up speed here but igneous you are now in the car um that was your action but if, if anything you want to sort of do interact with you know you see dr soup is kind of now in the middle seat because it's like a bench seat it's old school and there's a guy trying to so and what would you like to do igneous but that was my action there's no there's no grabbing anyone at this point you know what? i'd like to try to what's that I don't know. You're a you're a you're a big gumshoe. Uh, I want to I want to grab the guy that's that's on the pedal. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you do it. Um, he's gonna have advantage on it because you're p reaching past Doctor Soup and everything. So make an athletics check. Hey, little dummy. That is um, incredible. I rolled an eighteen twenty five. Yeah. Um, so basically, Doctor Soup, you're you're trying to like reach at the. You're trying to get the keys out. You're trying to do something. Uh, the dummy and Igneous grabs him, and he's like, "Try on my pace!" And you're going to try to just toss him out of the window. Okay. Uh, so Sister Mercy, <laughs> you see a dummy. Are you tossing him out of? You're tossing him out of. Are you picking him up and kind of tossing him out of the window where he's driving? Or are you like throwing him across your body out of the window closer to you? I'm throwing him across my body. So you cross your body. So Sister Mercy, you're running. And then as you run, you see a tidy little ventriloquist dummy with a newsboy cap go sailing out of the car, uh, screaming. Actually rolls pretty good on his deck save. He kind of just does a little, like, cartwheel land, stands up, brushes himself off, and goes, This city, I tell ya! It's worse than termites! He just starts wandering away um okay that is your turn igneous dr soup it is your turn again the car now has no driver uh no driver no driver it has it has pedal occupiers right yeah um can i so the one that was but the first thing i need you to do because on... you did run a little bit oh yeah, go, go ahead and make a constitution saving throw, you smoker. Oh, yeah, I didn't tell you this, Laura. You can smoke in this game, and it makes your charisma amazing because smoking is so cool looking, but then you have to roll constitution saving throws all the time. Uh, 20. 20. Oh, you, no. You're fine. You're fine. But you're fine. What are you going to do? So, so the one that was just thrown out was the one that was on the gas pedal, right? No, the one who was thrown out is the one who was on the steering wheel. On the driving. Okay. Then there's two down then, on the pedals. Okay. I'm going to get behind the wheel, okay. grab onto the wheel, and then I just want to, like, kick down at the one on the brake to try to, like, shove him down on the brake. <laughs> I understand. Make a... I think that's... I think that is an athletics check, unfortunately. I think you're trying to push, you know? It's like a, a leg lift. Oh, no, that's fine. I am I am proficient You're proficient at that? Perfect. Okay. I'll have him just try to get out of your way. Ah, 17. <laughs> Yeah, you do manage to press down, 
and he goes, "Hey, that's my face! Ah, oh, that's my pedal on my face! That's you know." He's and he's kind of all bent up, accordion style, and the the car begins to to growl as both the brake and gas pedal are both being pushed down. Doctor Soup, yeah. you look down, and the other one uh, is looking at that, um, and and he says. He, he says to the one who's being smushed, he's like, should I, should I stop stepping on it? Should I stop stepping on it? And that one says, you're not stepping on it already. You're still pushing on it. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I think that's all I got. That is all you've got. This is now their turn. Wow. Uh, a two from the one trying to break away from you. Don't even roll. Um, the other one, sensing this, uh, is going to let off the gas. So Igneous and Dr. Soup, uh, no roll is required, but you guys definitely have a real, like, skidding to a halt right. situation. Um, and then that one who's down there uh, is going to pull out a knife and just start trying to stab some legs. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Soup does a 19 hit your armor class. Uh, yes, it does. Then you take, wow, that's a max on it, unfortunately. Uh, you do take, uh, six points of piercing damage as you're stabbed in the foot by the one, and he would be stabbing your foot that's pushing his friend down. Uh, yeah. so you can still keep it down, but it's like painful. He only gets one attack. Um, but I think with that... Uh, he's gonna say, hmm, a tough guy, huh? Well, fuck this. And he is going to, uh, crawl out over you and out the window. <laughs> okay. Um, you do get an op attack on him if you want. No, no, I'll just, I'll just help him out the window. You're... Ah! He's down there. And the other one's like, ah! why is there varnish leaking onto me? Why is there varnish leaking on him? There's not varnish leaking on him. It's my blood. Yes. Oh. I'm, I'm really Thank into you. those kinds of dumb jokes. Like, oh, I like it so much. Anyway. Um, okay. That's their turn. Uh, uh, Igneous. Actually, Sister Mercy. The car has stopped. You can now catch up with the car. You do see I another uh, dummy brushing himself off and just walking off into the cold night. Being like, eh, I didn't need to get paid yet. I was going to go to the bad dragon. <laughs> that was eyeballs, if you couldn't tell. That's his eyeballs. Yeah. Ventriloquist dummy style going. Yeah. Uh, Sister Mercy, your turn. Yes. God, I like, God, I like ventriloquist dummies. I um, will uh, enter the vehicle. Okay. As fast as I can. You're in the vehicle. You can pull the door closed. Now the three of you are on the bench seat. No problem. Dr. Soup's at the, at the wheel. Uh, Igneous, anything you'd like to do? Uh, no, just, just conversation. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Soup, uh, Dr. Soup, I'm sorry. Uh, we heading to your place? Uh, uh, well, yeah, we should probably go, uh, somewhere else. Uh, do you wouldn't, uh, Igneous, wouldn't you like to throw this other uh, dummy out of here? Oh, 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 this guy. Yeah. Because, I, I mean, I can try to keep pressing down, but he might scri scribble out eventually. Yeah, 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 don't worry about it. And I Thank tried you. to throw him out, yeah. I, I didn't realize he was still in there. <laughs> I didn't see him, he was too little. Make an athletics check. He has disadvantage because he's already being grappled, okay? What are you at? Uh, 16. You are able to pick him up and pull him out. The car just jostle forward as now Dr. Soup's, uh, um, foot is no longer on the pedal. But yeah, you're able to toss this one out of the car as well. Why does it smell like varnish? Um. That's what I want to know! <laughs> um, uh... Well, actually, no. Uh, additionally, uh, Igneous, you want to take the wheel? I can sort of give you directions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. Uh, and I'll climb over the back of the, the 
the Perfect. seat into the back seat. So now, so now, rather than the three foot character driving, the four foot character drives. Perfect. So um, with that, uh, can't have Sister Mercy if she doesn't know how. But uh, Igneous is actually a very good driver. Um, so uh, so with that, Igneous, you 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 know raise the seat, pull the thing up, blah blah blah. You guys are golden, and you proceed to Heistley's University. It is raining. The windows wipe. You know the windshield wipers are. Going like this. Dr. Soup, as you sit in the back seat, um, you have this eerie feeling. Like there's somebody with you there. Out of the corner of your eye, you see a figure in the reflection. In the car with you. Does it look like who I saw out in the woods? Why don't you make a perception check? You think it is, but when you look over, there's nothing in the car. You think it was actually just some strange condensation on the window. We're gonna need to, we're gonna need to get some juice or something when we get to, to high you. I think my blood sugar's a little low. Uh, but we should be getting there any second. Uh, take take the take the next left. Go down fourth. Igneous. And with oh. that, Igneous guides you through the rainy city. Neon lights kind of crackling in the drizzle. Sister Mercy, you have truly, I mean, it was crazy for you to walk into the city like this, but you have never, you're in a moving car. And it's, the way it's lit up, it's, it's, you've never seen anything like it. Um, Let's say, uh, just always give another chance for them. Uh, Igneous, roll me a d20. 19. Not what I was looking for, but good. Um, I was trying to see if you were going to roll past a certain nightclub, but you have not. Um, in any event, um, Sister Mercy, the, the town seems decadent, strange, certainly alien to you. All of your fears about about this place, something about them feel founded. Igneous for you. Psst. It's another night in the in the Heistelies. Yeah, crazy stuff all the time. However, you do pull up to the uh, faculty parking at Heistelies University. It's very far from the campus. Long walk. Um... But uh, you guys have this car, kind of this big, you know, Packard-style vehicle. And um, what are you all doing as you as you park? The rain is continuing. Uh, actually, the rain is letting up by now. It is no longer raining. Uh, so what do you think about that, that tour you just got around the city, uh, Sister Mercy? This is uh, so much to take in. This, this carriage, there is no horses. Uh, well, yeah, the horse work. power is what you call it. Uh, under but the where, hood. where are the horses? Uh, they're in the engine. Are, are they <laughs> tiny? They must be this big. Can I see these tiny horses? Uh, oh, God. Yeah, uh, uh, wow. maybe maybe Dr. Soup can explain. <sighs> nope. <laughs> Don't think I can, Igneous. Um, oh my God. I have seen That's water a... horses. I have not seen uh, tiny this horses. Is, uh, uh, I'm gonna say two words here, and just if they make sense to you, we're in a different place here. Internal combustion. I know self-immolation, but not internal combustion. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so, so uh, like how you would light yourself on fire. Self-immolation, yes. Yeah. The engine lights itself on fire. There's a machine inside there that lights itself on fire. But then would the car not erupt in the flames? No, the car is protected against the fire inside. It uses that to power the itself horses. On. Are these horses magic? There are no horses. But where is their power? Are these magic horses? These are magic horses, little ones. Uh, yeah, there are, there are tiny magic horses inside the machine that gallop, and that's how we got here. Yeah. This I understand. This makes more sense than the fire. <laughs> so I'm also sorry, Igneous. I'm sorry it's a long walk. I mean, you gotta be tenure before you get a parking spot close to the building. 
Uh, this domain is very no interesting. I kind as long of just... as there's, there's uh, co-eds here. Uh, you got co-eds? I mean, yes, we have students of all variety of genders here at the, the university. Um, speaking of which, I guess, Igneous, Igneous, are you on the lookout for, for, for co-eds at the school? I mean, there's only one co-ed that, uh, that I care about, and that's Metamorphia. Okay. She go here? Sorry. Um, uh, do I know a Metamorphia? Well. Or are you saying that out loud? I'm sorry, Ignis. I said it out loud. Okay. Yeah. It's an unusual name. How, how old is Igneous? Do you think? Too old to be looking for co-eds. I would say he's he's. Uh, oh, I see. What you never mind. You have a date on here. Yeah. Um. You know, brickborn study at all sorts of ages. How much would you like for her to be at this school? She could be. Now is this a, now is this an igneous choice or a Zane choice? It's a Zane Ooh. choice. Hmm. But what's good for igneous is good for Zane. Dude. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna roll for it. Then please make a morality saving throw. Uh, let's, she, she is here. You want it. Please roll a d6. Specifically, <laughs> please roll a six. Four. Oh. You didn't realize this is what you were doing? Oh, all righty. Oh, so had to turn up the heat a little bit. Um, so for those keeping score at home, that counts as as that basically. Um, <laughs> Metamoria. Uh, yeah, you're uh, you're looking around because you actually know that she studies here. Um, so, uh, I'd like for you to make. A perception check. Eighteen. You glance around and uh, you know what she studies. You know the you know the, the field of study she's in. You don't Theology. see her just out here in the middle of the That's night. You don't racist. You don't see you don't see Metamorphia. But you do see one of the colleges, kind of one of like the buildings. Um It's the theater. The Performing Arts Center. And you know that she studies performing arts. So, uh, Dr. Soup, do you you know anybody over in uh, the performing arts at all? Like, like uh, got any connections, maybe? Like, anybody that could make me look good? Um, unfortunately, yes. <laughs> I'm aware of some of the professors there. I okay. also share an office, Igneous, here. Uh, so yes, I'm I, I am familiar with a professor there. Why? Why are you looking to take some improv classes or something? No, no, no. Uh, my 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 improv chops are pretty good, but uh, uh, this is this is Dame uh, Metamorphia. She's uh, she, I think she's too good for me, but. I don't know. She's everything I ever wanted. Uh, and I was just thinking maybe if you knew somebody, I could maybe uh, 
rub shoulders with uh, somebody important looking and she'd maybe notice me a little bit. Uh, I don't know, it's a long oh. shot. Don't worry about it, forget about it. I, this is ridiculous, I mean. I mean, but... do I know anything about this metamorphia, Philip? Metamorphia? Yeah. Um. Roll a d20. I always have you guys do that so I can maybe score an extra 13. 12. 12. Uh, no, never heard of her. Uh, okay. I mean, you know, you don't know every student at this university, certainly. And right, if she was one of my students, I might she's, have known her. She's but... not in any of your history classes. Um, um, well, uh, well, Igneous, I don't know this metamorphia offhand, uh, but, I mean, if it's as simple as making an introduction... We can either go in there, but we, we're headed to my office anyway. Chances are um, the adjunct professor of, of dramaturgy will be there. Yeah, fine by me. That's... I can make an introduction, and it's sort of up to you then. But you've, you've made several notable impressions so far in the limited time that I've known you, so that's probably fine. Hey, thanks for the compliment, Doc. Uh... Yeah, maybe we can go get cleaned up a little bit. Cause I, I don't smell too hot after that last uh, scuffle. Yeah, don't worry. There's um, there's some supplies in my office. You got any cologne? Of course. <laughs> okay, now we're talking. God, what, what does a brick use as cologne? Uh, so in that case, you guys will pass by the Falco Center for Performing Arts and instead head... Towards Dr. Soup's humble office. Dr. Soup, as you approach your office, you do see that there is a light on inside, even at this late hour. All right. There's, I mean, we're not going to sneak up on this one. There's just someone else in the office. We'll be fine. And I'll, I'll open the office. And the door opens to reveal, uh, Laura, if you would like to describe your character to us, please do so. Uh, yes. uh, so she's sitting there, um, and uh, she is a rat, uh, about in her 50s. Um, she has, imagine, like, a toupee situation, but for a woman, like a, like a really bad wig, and uh, bright red, dark red lipstick uh, applied, like, haphazardly. Like, she thinks she looks super cute. She doesn't. Um, she's like furiously like writing and mumbling to herself. Um, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> um, Hello, Professor Vecina, Giant Mall. I see you're working oh. late yet again. So nice to meet you. We've met many times, Professor Vecina, Giant Mall. Right. We share an office. Right. It's me, Dr. Soup. Oh, yes. The one that has the clean side of the office here. Oh, mm hmm. So organized. <laughs> um, and who are your friends? Uh, this is uh, Sister Murphy and. Mercy. That's what I said. You said Murphy. That's just sort of my mouth. Um, you said but it you... correctly before. Sister Mercy. Uh, oh. And. Igneous. Uh, Igneous, this is, I believe, who you wanted to meet. Uh, this is Professor Whiskerina Vecina Giant Mall. Hello. Uh, nice to meet you. The name's a mouthful. Can I call you Giant? Um, I prefer not. That's my ex husband's name. Um, just Vizini is fine. Vizini. I like the ring of that. Uh, Nice to meet you. Uh, so, uh, so you two share an office too, huh? <laughs> yes, it's lovely. Who, who pays the rent? Uh, um, share it's, it. It's a it's a university office, Igneous. Oh, <laughs> part of our, our our job working here. Yeah, yeah. Uh... <clears throat> so I guess the students pay the rent if you really want to get down into it. Students. Um, Philip, 
Yes. Uh, can I do like an insight check to check like what each of their auras are? <laughs> Ooh, God. I think, yeah, I mean, ap- yes, but uh, this should be, uh, let's see, where is it? Did you study theater where I did? Because this is one of my college professors. <laughs> Um, sure this is I will say you you absolutely can do that, but I will say you can actually do um, rather than an insight, you can do an integrity check on them, which is okay, which is just all. Th- it's, it's a little better for you, and that will kind of give that? you a better sense of their aura. Uh, and, and just remember, as you begin to roll here, tell me about those sweet sweet natural thirteens if we get them. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, wait, do I have an, oh, integrity. Okay. Well, it's a seven. Okay. Uh, so Sister Mercy, um, strikes you as a very, you, you don't get much. You assume she's closed off based on her clothing. She's either religious or a dancer at the Bad Dragon. Um, and then, uh, go ahead and roll one for, uh, for Igneous. Ten. Ten. Um, he seems to be an, an average working class brickborn. Um, oh, just so you're aware, uh, Igneous is a like is like a blocky red red brick person, about four feet tall, size of a dwarf. He's made out of bricks. He's a brick. Oh, boy. made out of literal bricks. He's okay. like he's like formed of brick. Yeah, that's his vibe. <laughs> Oh, so, and I'm a, I'm a gremlin. And Dr. Soup is a gremlin, so think goblin with horns and long fingers. Um, and I know I've, I know Dr. Soup, but what is his general aura that I've gotten working with, sharing an office with him? I will say fastidious is the main thing you as an office mate would have picked up on. Um... But that is what you essentially this. Sister Mercy, I will also mention you are now looking at, uh, you saw a dead giant rat when you first woke up in this place. But this is a rat who is talking to you. And she's about, uh, you know, uh, uh, rat folk are typically between like two and a half, three and a half feet. How tall do you think Whiskerina is? Two and a half, one, three and a half. Uh, it's slightly above two and a half. So she's, she's like even smaller than Dr. Soup, but there's this rat and she's chatting with you. So yep. it's a weird, it's a weird situation here. This, for some reason, this is more disturbing than the rock. Than the rock, man. There you go. Um, but, but so, uh, Whiskerina, that is the, that is the, uh, energy you get from all these people. Uh, there's, a. Uh, I'll, I'll head over to my, to my desk and, uh, I'll pull out a, open one of the drawers and pull up a bottle of clone and set it on the desk. Uh, Igneous, if you want to sort of clean up a little bit, I'm going to sort of change, uh, get out of these, you know, tattered and bloody clothes. Hey, thanks, Soup. This is Axe Body Spray. This is the good stuff. God. Only the best. I will immediately start coughing. Yeah. <laughs> um... <laughs> That stuff's really good. Everyone has to roll a poison check on that. Um, so actually, uh, I, I, I import it from the UK, so it's linked actually. <laughs> uh, so so for those of you who were in sort of a fight, um, it seems you are attempting some kind of a rest here at this point, right? A short rest at least. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, let you let you do a short rest. You may you can talk some to Whiskerina. Um, so if there's anything you do want to chat about while you kind of kind of go through this, we can do that. But. Uh, um, and Whiskerina, what are you, so you're, you're furiously writing, like, uh, any, you're just, just papers, anything specific you're working on? Oh, um, yes, uh, I'm, I'm grading everyone's, uh, final scenes, and basically writing, like, um, just my feedback Perfect. on each of, each of their scenes. It's Love a cut it. program, so I'm making cuts. <laughs> Brutal. Um... Wow. So, I have a question for Vicini. Vicini, um, you teach the uh, theater here. Mm-hmm. Is that what I'm... Oh, wait, did I know that? 
Did I pick up on, on that from the conversation that I think Dr. Soup indicated that, so yes. Okay. I am just wondering what the significance of uh, this is in, 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 in this world. And can I show her the Scores Worth More book? Absolutely. With Scarina, you are handed mm -hmm. um, a sort of like a folder. Um, the exterior binding of it seems incredibly like old and old fashioned. Um, but if you flip through it, it is a loose set of sheet music, uh, book, and lyrics for... Uh, actually, tell you what, why don't you roll a performance check? Uh, that's kind of your expertise in these matters. Good lord. I need to switch my dice. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, ten. A ten. Um... This is a play you've you've certainly heard of it. You you have never performed it because it's very um, it's kind of it's kind of banal. It is a play called it's a musical called The Score Is Worth More. Um, you can make the decision right now if Whiskerina, Vicini Giant Mall, um, ever uh, are you a musically inclined person or would you never taint your soul with a with a musical comedy? That's that's entirely up to you. Um, if you like to, if you like to direct big, big, flashy musicals, that's great. If you, if you find them uh, shallow and uh, appealing to the masses, that's fine. And you're here for real drama. I will leave that entirely up to you. Yes, um, I'm much more about Shakespeare and Chekhov. Understood. Um, and musicals that are just below the highly intelligent theatrical person. So you are not familiar with this because this is what. Like, this is what, like, if, like, a child wrote it, you'd pat them on the head and say, good try. So, mm -hmm. um, you've never done this play. You don't have any specific insight into it other than that you are sick of hearing all of the songs from it played ad nauseum. Mm -hmm. Ugh. And um, where did you find this? Uh, this is something from... Where I am from, it is um, oh. rare where I come from. I Do see. you know of its significance? Um, hmm. Well, what I'm getting from this is very low energy vibes. I do not know what this low very... energy is. had very high energy it came to us from Oh, from here, where I'm not from, and it passed through a a lot to get to me. So, do you understand why yes. I don't get what you are saying? Um, hmm. it's just. Have you ever read Shakespeare? Have I ever read Shakespeare? It's a very interesting question. Ooh. Um, you're familiar with the name, certainly. Okay, I I am familiar with the playwright's name, but I am not familiar uh, with his works. Hmm. Um. Well, see, Shakespeare is very high energy vibes. This is very low energy vibes like when 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 you perform dog poo -poo. This, poo -poo. okay uh so when you perform the shakespeare does it yeah. uh does it transport you to another world of course <laughs> it takes you to another realm like it like it pulled <laughs> like a a, a a completely different place there is magic in the words I mean, yes. Where is the Shakespeare? Can I? May I see the text? L l let me of, translate. Of yes. Uh, Vicini, she, she's not from around here. She she thinks she magically was brought here with a song and dance and like really magic, not like the magic you're talking about with like like vibes. You know, she's talking <laughs> about like 
magic carpet floating through the mist. Oh, there were no, from there were no carpets involved. It was this, it was this, it was a song. It opened up a, a place for us to pass through to hear. And if this Shakespeare can do the same thing, maybe it can take me back to my home or open up another oh. place and we can learn more and see what is going on and hopefully shut the rips in the mist. Uh, speaking of we, did anyone see what happened to your friend, uh, Rawlings? I didn't catch him at the end of it. I didn't see how him much, looks. How much did I see? From down there, nothing. Uh, all I, I believe she did tell you, I believe Hattie told you that Rawlings uh, disappeared. Um, or that Rawlings was gone, but you don't know where he is. I do not know where he is, so it is up to me. And I need your help to get me back to my place and to help mend the mist. Yeah, and, and sorry, do I, I, I again have no recollection of what drew me here, right? In the first place that that was- You do not. Okay. You, I mean, you have all the recollection of Mercury, you have recollection of preparing it, but yes, right. you have no recollection post that of kind of what, okay. you have those missing days and they have not returned to you. Okay. Yeah, uh, you know, while you're helping her with her mission, I'm on a mission too. Mm -hmm. I'm on a mission to smash and I'm wondering, you know, like uh, meet someone. Uh, mm -hmm. and I'm wondering if you might know, uh, a dame by the name of Metamorphia. She goes here. Um, by smash. Mm -hmm. What exactly do you mean? Oh, it's like, uh, it's what you call, uh, you know, from Brickborn, that's that's uh, dating. Um, we're bricks. You know, you, you smash bricks together. Oh. Like a date. Like, I want to ask her out. <sighs> she's she's Children a great... these days, so... Simple. Um, Philip. Hmm. Uh, I had a question. <laughs> no, I forget. So, uh, oh, there's a lot going on. <laughs> Do I know this metamorphosis? Well, as it happens, uh, there's one more roll I need. Uh, Zane, why don't you make this roll? D20. It's a six. Six. Um, Whiskerina, uh, I'm actually going to tell you this. You are familiar with metamorphia. I'm going to put this in a private uh -huh. direct message to you. Oh. Um she's kind of like the lowest of the low. That's what she is. Do you, do you, do you see that? I, I sent it to you on chat. Oh. Uh. Yeah. So you're familiar with her. Um, you don't pay any attention to her, but um, she's, you know who she is. Right. Um, it took me a while to uh, scrub through the cobwebs of my brain, if you will. Um, but yes, I know her. Um, she... You should work on your taste, my love. Oh, she, yeah, I, I have been. I uh, put on some Max Body Spray and uh, I'm ready to... Uh, ready to smash, ready to meet her. Uh, you maybe you can introduce us. I mean, while we're figuring out this whole mist thing. I mean, are are yes. are we figuring out this whole mist thing? I think that you should, considering the danger of having the mist ripped the way it is. I mean, it's allowing always... people such as me from other realms to come in. So. I mean, I mean that's all. That's all that you sort of claim, right? Like. You, you're, I mean, right now, so far, you and your friend have shown up here with no real goal, saying a magic choir book brought you here. 
And you did something that got you thrown down there that you can't remember. My goal Luck. is to fix the rips in the mist. And to return to my home. Hopefully. However, we are trying to prevent yeah. my world and your world from intersect intersecting and other worlds from intersecting because I have seen not only this world, but the other world too. There may be more. Who knows? Did, quick question. Did we see the... the the ship that came down. You would not we were have on seen the... it. Okay. Yeah, you were you were down below, climbing down. It came just to the basically just to the roof. Um, the building's too too high. Um, so, well, actually, you can continue that thought if that if that if that changes. If we yeah. Um. I don't know. It just feels a little bit like um. I know, Igneous, you you kind of run in all manner of circles, I imagine. Yeah. It just feels a little conny to me. It, Who is conny? Constance. Who is Constance? Like a, like a trick. Like someone trying to cheat someone out of something. Conny is not doing. a trick. I know her. Uh, well... Oh, my God. But... I mean, you know, I, I mean, when we were back at my place, I mean, there was a moment where, I mean, Rawlings was pretty convincing, Mercy, Sister Mercy. I, I mean, I was up for an adventure, you know. What, what would I be conning out of you? You share an office, you share an office. You don't even have your own offices. Do you? Uh, you That's want us to help you do something. I don't yes. want to be a patsy. I don't want to be a foot soldier. Who are these women that you keep bringing up? I do not know this patsy. Oh All my that I'm trying to do is okay. protect our homes. I will speak in the most literal terms. I think you might be lying. I don't want to be a servant to whatever plan you have going on. And all I know right now is nothing you said makes any sense or adds up. Hey, Dios mio. Dr. Soup, please make a morality saving throw. Uh, ten. There's a, um, if any of you had slightly higher perception, but this is a, this is a blissfully low perception party for me. Um, but the sort of the audience, the camera, sees that there's a fifth figure in this room, or at least the way reflection on the on the sort of still wet window there seems to be this sort of just handsome figure watching listening feeling what dr soup is saying sort of smiles this million dollar matinee idol smile the kind of smile that can melt a heart smile that makes you think deep down he's not all bad and Dr. Soup it's almost like a whisper in your ear whatever Sister Mercy's up to it must be really valuable whatever she's doing must be the way that you could really turn things around for yourself Speaking of which, it kind of glimmers for a second, and for this moment you think you see something in the in the window again, another reflection, but then it's gone. But you notice on your desk there's a little box. Huh. Oh. It's finally here. I'll open up and open up the box. And within and... you find a small pin with the Heistelis University uh, sort of crest on it. And with a couple of other little colors on it imply sort of the history department. I'll pin it to my sweater and I'll sit down at my desk. I'll say, 
I apologize for raising my voice and getting worked up. Clearly, you are not from around here. And the logic of where you're from and here are clashing. And clearly, there must be some sort of gap because you came here and you don't remember why, and but you are he clearly here long enough to get in trouble to end up in the judge's basement. But that's a gap in your memory. That happens. We just need to figure out exactly what is in those gaps and how it sort of affects us. If filling in the gaps will help you help me, then let's discover what happened in those gaps. Okay, but the ultimate goal is, let's say it together, closing the gaps in the mist to protect all of our homes. I'm sorry, Vicini, you look lost. There's a lot going on, I understand. What is this mist? The, the mist, the, the mist that's around your uh, city, your town. You know, the fog that's always there, Professor Vizina. Uh, yeah. Just Sister the normal Marcy, everyday fog. Show her. Show her. If I show my hand, like if I show my hand, does the mist show up or do I have to use... My... You have to take the clothing off. But... Oh, okay, but but I don't have to use like a spell or anything. No, so. it's it's visible. Mm -hmm. Should I show the mist? Yes. <laughs> so I pull. <laughs> Sorry, I pull the glove off. Okay. And expose my right hand. So, uh, Whiskerina, you see that Sister Mercy's forearm and, and sort of the base of her hand is hollow kind of with jagged almost like something like cut pieces out of it and yet within there is this purple thick gray mist kind of just it looks it looks very much like you know like like a like a like a fog machine you'd use in a theatrical production um the mist is is potent, sickly sweet, with a copper aftertaste. Could I insight the mist to kind of understand like uh, you it's could, good or bad? What could, is the mist's aura, Philip? Okay, so you so so you could certainly make an arcana check, but if you want to try to get the the yes. aura of the mist, um, why don't you yes. first make an arcana okay. check? Let's do that. Okay. First, just go arcana. Fourteen for Arcana. I mean, it is it is obvious that it is magical. You know enough of the boundaries of Heistelis to know that she is talking about the strange mist that seems to surround the city. A mist no one really ever travels through. Why would you? You're already in Heistelis. Um It seems like some of this mist is inside of her. That seems Notable. Go ahead and roll um, a an integrity check on the mist itself. This is a pretty high DC, but you can certainly try it. Seventeen. Seventeen. Oh my God! What's your what's your modifier? Do you have a plus oh. four? No, I have a plus three. It's fine. I got so Why? much last week. I'm being greedy. I'm just you trying to. You wanted that thirteen. Oh. Yeah. He's um, trying to abuse us. I let. Just, it's fine. Um, you. The mist feels angry. This mist in particular feels mad. Um, she, she kind of like gets down and like sniffs it. Um, um, oh. 
It's vicious, I angry. Will, it's I will quickly dangerous. put my glove back on. Mm-hmm. And all of you, like, like it, no, no rolls are required, but like having that glove off, like, gives you all a bit of a headache. Like when you're in that proximity, especially like in a closed room like this. Um, but you put the glove back on, and the the sort of miasma sort of begins to clear. Yes, it is. And this is why you do not want it broken around this place. Because it will let bad things in. And I'm here to ensure that it doesn't happen to you and it doesn't happen to my home. So, uh, I mean, yeah, that's compelling. Uh, How are we supposed to do that, though? Like, by doing the play? Singing the song? I still don't believe that it, it, it trash brought you here. Uh, um, yeah. Actually, Whiskerina, go ahead and make another Arcana check for me. And Dr. Suit, please continue your point. I was just going to say, I don't know about that, Ignios. I think if that were the case, it would have happened before now, right? Like, that, that gets performed all the time here. True, true. Maybe it has to do with the place that these things are performed. Well, For instance, Vicini said that when Shakespeare is performed here, magic happens. You are transported oh, to another place. That was not literal. More yeah. of an emotional thing she was describing. <laughs> Whiskerina, what was that uh, arcana check you made? I... Uh, Twelve. Okay. Um, so. Uh... Yeah, Dr. Soup, you may continue. Oh, but based off of, uh, I don't think the song is really going to have, or at least maybe perhaps the version that you came here with is not going to have a lot of relevance. It, it, based off of what Rawlings was saying, it seems like there's a different trigger. That was his theory. It seemed like there were different keys. I, 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 I think they're all books, according to him but that they have that each place that he was talking about seemed to have its own thing. So I don't know that the, the score is worth more is going to be the same here. It's probably something else that you'll, that you'll have to find. Can I examine the score is worth more again to see if there's anything that indicates like 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 a link to something else like an afterword or um a note or something you may you've already looked through the text a couple times here um yeah. go ahead and make an investigation roll i mean any chance for you to roll a 13 is fine by me um okay. nope that's a two you, 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 you almost feel like the more you're looking through it, like the less you're finding in it, the more okay. mundane it seems to become. Like you're confident there were clues in this when you were reading it in Merkshire, and now it just seems like, it seems like there's nothing hidden between the words. Um, you have all now completed a short rest, those of you who were attempting to. Whiskerina's uh, grading of a uh, student's acting has kind of been, been interrupted here at the time. But so, go ahead. Well, I have to imagine, based off of your reaction to this piece of music, that it's very rare where you're from. It's not a song anyone has heard of before. Sounds like nothing I have ever heard before. And I have studied music. <sighs> Professor. The Xena giant ball. I believe we may need some of your expertise here. Do you know of any particularly rare plays or pieces of theatrical music that are very rarely, if ever, performed in modern times? Hmm. So, Whiskerina, I or will tell perhaps you. perhaps some other voices you hear might know. 
That is another option. Whiskerina, if you would like to kick up your ability to do this, you could. You could bust out. Oh, how do I do that? Understood, yes. Uh, so, um, uh, you have two options, and they're both sort of actually equally viable for your subclass. The first is you could channel a ghost who is an expert in these matters, uh, like a like a like a like a ghost who might know more about this. Uh, you'll be able to grant yourself some like additional proficiency to try to roll on this with a higher modifier. That's option one. Option two is something unique to your subclass because you are a spirit medium of the morbid mysteries. Um, because you work in a theater. There are a lot of ghosts around here who are friendly to you. So if you would like to, you could expend one use of I see dead people to make contact and simply ask other ghosts if any of them are aware of such things rather than channeling one directly and sort of having to rely on the knowledge of, 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 of one specific ghost who you find. You could kind of ask a much larger group. Um, so this is, yeah, this is that, uh, on page, what was it, like, 43, I think? Um, yeah. it is that I see what dead people the, feature. What was the first feature called? The first feature is Channel the Dead, which is on the Channel first, the or the, okay. the third page of, uh, page 39, I think. Channel the Dead. So you could either channel the dead, or you could speak to the oh, dead, kind of I see dead people, or... If we're being honest, you could also just do both of those because they're not mutually exclusive. You could both channel and commune and be just a absolute fright queen. Okay. Um, for right now, I'm going to, uh, yes, put my hands on my temples and uh, all of a sudden my eyes go wide like this and I do, I see dead people. Understood. So you'll see dead people. Um, Whiskerina. You reach out, part peeking behind the veil, and you see the usual motley crew of deceased uh, actors, former acting students, uh, professors, all of those who've died around campus over the years, um, who've decided to sort of hang around you and what's going on. And you actually notice a fairly larger crowd than typical. People seem interested in this group. Um... You, the rest of you do not hear this, but you may engage in a telepathic communication with all of them. So, what would you like to ask them? Remind me, what was Sister Mercy's specific question again? Sister Mercy, you can remind her of that. Yes. If, wait, what was it? Is there another? If uh, there is another text, I think it was actually Doctor Soup's question. Is part yeah. of that. yeah, it's oh. part of why it's part of why she yeah. doesn't remember. Because I was asking about Shakespeare in yeah. particular, and then Doctor Soup expanded on that. Uh, yeah, any sort of very rare plays or pieces of theatrical music that are no longer performed. Hmm. Perhaps forgotten. All right. Uh, okay. And I'll, I'll I'll turn to while she does this. I'll turn to like Sister Mercy and Ignis. Uh, you might want to get comfortable. This is going to be weird and take a little while. Yeah. She's is just she like talking to God. So talking uh, to someone. So Whiskerina, go ahead. <sighs> <laughs> Love it. <Damn> it. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> I did it without breaking it. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. Here's the thing break, don't My break. <laughs> yeah. My friends, uh, so lovely to see you all again. Do any of you know I'm trying to help, uh, my fellow. Friends, I guess. Um, they're looking for a lowly, lowly piece of music. Uh, you know, that a theatrical piece no longer performed, probably very, very, ugh. But apparently will we'll help save our world. Whiskerina, 
you ask this sort of motley crew, and you hear a bunch of uh, the usual banter of, uh, yeah, we heard everything they're saying, we're standing right here, or others like, oh, of course, I'd love to help remember this. Remember when I was a professor when you were just a student here, and uh, <laughs> remember those parties we'd have at my house? They don't let us do those anymore, et cetera, et cetera, all sorts of weird things. But um, as, these, uh, as these questions go through, Whiskerina, for probably the first time in a long time, as you are telepathically communing with the dead, you experience a moment of disquiet. And sort of as the space around you begins to shift, you see this specter, one you have not seen before. It is being drawn by the others toward you. The spirit is young, a student, a young man, very handsome, but he is missing his jaw and he has various injuries and he is wearing some kind of, um, the costume seems very Elizabethan. It seems very old fashioned, um, but extremely specific, uh, ornamentation and symbols on it and as he sort of moves towards you with this hissing sound kind of sucking from where his throat would be that's missing he simply says and he begins to sort of rush toward you it, this is a more intense malevolent direct contact that you have had with a spirit in distress in a very long time. I want you to make an integrity roll on this spirit. Ten. All you feel is pain and anger. You're not sure what's happening. The experience is extremely strong, however. The other ghosts actually begin to move aside from this figure. Something about what he's saying, nevertheless, is triggering a memory. This is not a term you've never heard, though it's not one you're particularly familiar with. The forbidden play. There is, based on the clothing he's wearing, it does not seem authentic. It definitely seems like it's a costume. Oh. He seems young. Seems like a student here at some point. He gets close to you, and his ghostly visage begins to <laughs> desiccate before your eyes as he seems to go through centuries of aging and decay in a moment and then you see this snake <laughs> burst out of whatever remained of his eye and begin to slither around what is left of his jawless skull mm -hmm. And then he is gone too. The ghosts have fled. Your usage of I see, I can, I see dead people has, has now been expended. Okay, they're all gone. Okay. Yes. <gasps> oh my goodness. There, there was a boy. Um, oh my, ah, oh, um, he was, his jaw was gone. I'm so much pain, so much pain. Um, he mentioned the, uh, have you heard of the forbidden play? No. Have you have heard I... of the forbidden play? No. Whiskerina, go ahead and, uh, it sounds vaguely familiar. Go ahead and make, um, make a performance check. Thirteen, not natural. <laughs> oh, gosh. It is definitely ringing a bell. You might need to do some research. You might need to do something. 
Um, I see. And you definitely know, you, you, I'll say that you have a, 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 there's a vague glimmer of memory that maybe before your time some student was killed in some production um, yes, yes. here at the campus. However, amidst this eerie moment, the lights above begin to just dim ever so slightly. And then a little bit more. And then they're out. You get to pay the bills? No. This is not good. I, I don't think so. Um, hmm. Hello. Oh, uh, hmm. Would it be unreasonable to assume that I would have on display in my office um, a shield and an additional war pick? Sure. That seems seems fine. I would like to get those things at this You moment. may grab those objects without problem. Um, at this point, you all do hear a certain degree of um, movement, distant. You guys hear it later than other people would have because of, uh, you know, passive receptions. But there is this, there's a sound of a struggle, of a scuffle of some kind coming from the hallway. And then you hear very pointedly a voice. Help! 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 Muffled cut off while shouting this. What do you do? Somebody needs help out there. Careful, Ignis. I didn't hear any, like, one-liners. I don't think it's the dummies that followed us. So, this is something else. Just be careful. Uh, I, I'll, uh, I'm gonna get my shield ready and my war pick ready. Okay. Uh, Philip? Yes? I'm going to cast um, Augury. Okay. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. <sighs> what question do you have? Good question. Um, oh. oh, man. Uh, spirits, do they actually need help? Right. Um, so typically, yes. augury works in a way where you have to ask, like, like about a plan, yes. how well the plan will work. However, okay. I'm going to allow basic. You're basic. I think you're basically casting divination. I think I'm fine with it in this instance. Um, you or ask. I can rephrase. Would it be helpful if I like? I basically want to see if this person is is lying like are they i'm gonna say it? does this person need help that that seems like okay. a reasonable question an answer kind of comes back from the void that you were just connected from you you feel those presences softly returning and a quiet voice simply whispers yes I, I think, I don't think it's a trap. You think or you know? Is there, what is the uh, foolproofness of this? Because didn't you say at one point they can give you. If you cast like it multiple times, there are times okay, if they cast it is multiple. sort okay. of foolproof. But the first time, it's go pretty... ahead. Go ahead and throw one integrity on top of this, though. Okay. 
No. Uh. Um. Twelve. <sighs> With a twelve, you sense no deception, but you don't recognize the voice you just heard. Uh, yes, I, 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 I think, I know, it, they're not trying to deceive us, but I, I don't recognize the voice. What do you suppose we do, Igneous? I mean, we're not just going to leave somebody out there to, to suffer if they need help. And I pick up uh, something in my general vicinity, like a chair. Perfect. Shield. Got a chair as a shield. Wonderful. Are you going out into the hallway? I'm going to kick the door open and go into the hallway. Perfection. All right. Uh, you walk out into the hallway. Uh, glancing down one side, you don't see anything, but kind of silhouetted against a window about, mm -hmm. about 40 feet from you. Um, you see this hulking figure standing over a small, very small woman in a black dress with a black hat and like a like a veil over part of her face. Um, the figure sort of looks down at her and boom, punches her on the ground. Um, is anyone following Igneous out or is he the only person sort of witnessing this? I will follow him out and I will have removed my glove. Understood. So both of you are stepping out. Uh, is Dr. Soup... Uh, Whiskerina, are you guys outside as well? I'm waiting. Dr. Soup is waiting. I'm in the office still. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm carefully, I'm kind of behind them. Sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. Peeking, um, yeah. so that is a hit. So she takes. Okay. Um, I need Igneous and Sister Mercy and Whiskerina to please make a morality okay. saving throw. Oh. Three. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, Fifteen. Fifteen. Wonderful. Yes. Igneous. This woman is in terrible distress. You have to help her. You can't let her be hurt. You have to help her. Hey! Hey! The figure looks Who told you her. it's okay to hit ladies? Um, the figure sort of stiffens for a moment, rearing back to punch down again. It turns back to you. And sort of in the moonlight, you see this ragged, hulking form, stringy hair, face um, partially decayed, eyes dead in their sockets, this dead thing staring at you. It says... Stay out of this living thing. And then it kind of just like stands over this woman, sort of preventing her from, from leaving freely. Let's roll initiative. Eighteen. Eighteen for Igneous. <laughs> Sister Mercy? Hold on. I think okay. it's nineteen. 19. 19, way to go. Uh, Dr. Soup? 16. 16. All right. Uh, Whiskerina? Zero. <laughs> oh, no. Whiskerina has a, has a negative dex, and I love it. Um, great. And then I guess I should roll for her as well, even though she's not really probably going anywhere. Um, okay. Um, Sister Mercy, you are yes. up. 
you are up first, Dean. Okay. Um, so what do I see in this hole? At the end of the hallway, there is a woman being struck by this, like, six-foot-three corpse that has just looked back at you and, t- and basically told Igneous to stay out of this for because he's alive. Okay. And can I go into a fervor? You, or... you can. Absolutely. You can always go into a fervor, and you have actually now, you no longer have a level of exhaustion, so you can bonus action fervor as you sort of just become so certain of your beliefs, so certain of your righteousness. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Laura, Lauren is playing a believer, which is another one of these crazy new classes, basically a cultist. Um, so Good. Sister Mercy, uh, you bonus action, you're in your fervor. What would you like to do? Uh, he's within 120 feet, right? He I'm assuming. For, he is 40 feet from you. Okay. I will cast Miss Touch. Ooh, all right. Make your attack roll. Okay. Come on. Oh, I'm rolling good. Uh, 22. 22. That better hit. Oh, it hits. Go ahead and roll your damage. (laughs) Okay. Uh, It is only 1d8. So it is. (gasps) Eight! (laughs) All right. So here's here's the fun part. I'm going to I'm going to say this all so you can do this how it goes. So okay. you look at this undead thing and you strike out and your mist flies from your hand wrapping around dealing necrotic damage. And for yes. a moment upon sort of seeing this the creature looks confused but almost like smug knowing that it is resistant to necrotic damage. Oh, fuck. Have you, have you read your features though? Uh, yeah, yes, but I haven't memorized them, Philip. Sure. Well, look at feature. Look at the third feature under features. I like. Uh. When, I like when things just work out to demonstrate things. Hold on. Hold on. It's just Everyone. on. Your, it's on your page. It's on your page. Oh. I was on looking at sheet. the whole, like, class. No, 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 no. Go, I mean, you can also look there, but just look on your sheet. Where? Far right. Far right where it says features, under your spellcasting stuff. I'm, uh, oh, while in fervor, no creature is resistant to my damage. There you go. You have a feature called unyielding pain. Creatures cannot be resistant. They can still be immune, but they cannot be resistant. So with that, you deal the full, and, and, and he sort of, glares at you upon seeing this. <laughs> Great. All right, that she is a bonus action and an action. Um, very good turn. Um, the woman on the ground, meanwhile, actually rolled incredibly high. Um, she is going to hold an action to just, like, try to get a, you know, she's basically, she's, she's going to hold an action in case she has a better opportunity than what's going on here. Um... So that brings us to Igneous. I'm going to pull out old Sparky and shoot this bastard. All right. Go ahead and make your attack roll. Fuck. Uh, that's a natural 13, but that takes me to uh, 18. An 18. <laughs> so good. it's a good news, good news. It's a good news for everybody. An 18 hits. Zane, you have given me five today. Um, please roll a d13. Okay. Let me take it out of the cage. <laughs> Two. Well, we can't all get them. Is there like a special thing that happens if one person gives you all 13 of them? Oh. I mean, I think I buy that person like candy or no, something. Don't, I don't know. No, don't. Because Dan will be like, yes. Yeah, Dan Adam. will be. And done. All right. Very good. So you should. So, uh, so go ahead and roll your damage on that. You do hit with this electric the air smells like ozone as you as you pull out like a like a six gun and shoot zero and just is like a, a zero is a ten a ten so that's a ten 13 points of damage wow and then three of lightning right uh it's all light all lightning oh yes so basically yeah you see and like the room smells like ozone it's this kind of like bluish just electric bullet fires out and catches this dead creature who's just ah, just furious um 
Wonderful. Dr. Soup, it is your turn. Um, so sort of examining the situation, I would like to... Well, you're in your office. You All you see, all yeah. you saw was people uh, I, yeah, walking out and attacking. Yeah. I understand. But I'm hearing screams. I'm hearing a lightning blast go off. Yeah. So examining the situation of what, what I'm in right now, um, I, I'd like to use my action because I don't think I'm going to be able to give my lecture tomorrow. I would like to write on my lecture notes to my TA, just a note that says, Nathaniel, deliver this word for word, no deviations. Uh, and then I will go out into the hall and go into a flow. Okay. So action, writes a note, bonus action, entering a flow, stepping out into the hallway. Mm -hmm. Love it. Okay. It is the turn Wait. of the bad guy. Um, this thing is going to look down at this woman seeing you all coming and, uh, is just going to kind of just snarl back at you. Stay out of this, you fools. And, uh, it's going to kind of get down and it's going to try to, like, choke her. Um, so... Has advantage because she's prone. definitely hits. Um, Dr. Soup, please make a wisdom saving, or a, a morality saving throw. It would be a four. A four. Um, you have to help this woman. You have to save her. You have to do whatever you can to get her to not be killed by this. Understood. You, you have, like, just, you absolutely mm -hmm. have to save her. There's no, there's no question. She just took 25 points of damage, by the way. <sighs> I don't know um, that I'm going to be able to. <laughs> all right. Um, that is his turn. Uh, it is Whiskerina's turn. We can... Uh, oh, hi, Whiskerina. Perfect. Perfect timing. She's got yeah, that there. All right, so Whiskerina, what would you like to do? Uh, he he sort of saw all you attacking, and now he's like kind of like just getting down and trying to attack her instead. What would you like to do? I'm trying to attack her. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, he seems to... Uh, would this be an action if I... Uh... I wanted to see if I, on first glance, recognize either of them from this Ooh. realm or spirit realm. Yeah, okay. Um, roll a... This is more a thing. Uh, tell you what, roll your, thir roll your d13. Yes. Uh, one. You do not. I think. Yeah. You 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 Lovely. don't recognize cool. any of these people. Wonderful. Unfortunately. Yeah. But okay. Great idea. Was that my full action? Uh no, that was a that was a free just look look through your Sweet. brain kind of situation. Okay, then since he's going to attack her, I shall Oh, where'd it go? Um Cool, of course it is. Okay, I make, she makes like a whole thing of like this and- <laughs> A lot of actions totally and stuff and yeah, sure. But, and then all of a sudden a, um, a beam comes out and hopefully hits this uh, figure and I Wonderful. cast Ghost Beam. Ghost Beam, okay, excellent. Um, very good, so roll your attack. If your intention was in the right place, it'll hit. <laughs> yes. Okay, what is mine? And that should be kind of in your middle box there under attacks. Uh, yes, I found it. So it's a 25. A 25 hits. So roll your D13, D13. to do your damage. Uh-oh. 10. 10. Not bad. All right. So you do 10 points, and though it is called Ghost Beam, um, it's a, this is a little bit like a chill touch situation where it's not doing what you expected to do. Ghost Beam actually deals force damage uh, because what you are really doing is you are just sending like the ethereal plane itself at this person. Oh, so you do sense. a big 10 points of damage. and It's like, uh, a, it's like a proton pack. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
It's like a beam for a ghost. Uh, so Whiskerina, that is your uh, that is your action. Uh, anything else? I don't think you have any bonus actions. Uh, that's, that's it. But you did it with so much flourish. I mean, it was an action and a half, really. Uh, perfect. Okay, that is her turn. Um, Sister Mercy, your turn. Okay. Do, did I get any sense that... Wait, I'm still in a fervor, right? You're in a fervor, yeah. This whole time. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're in a fervor for one minute. Even if you even if you are knocked unconscious, you're still in a fervor. Okay. I would like to... Hold on. Can I cast Inflict Wounds? You can, but that is a touch I... spell. Oh! Now... If you want to go, can I do Miss Touch again? Sure, you can just do your cantrip. If you like, I'll, I'll, like in this is a, um, I would go, I would bust out some spells maybe if you have them because this is a beefy individual, um, and okay. I think that I think that that would be a good thing I, for you to do. But you okay. will have to move. Uh, we can say that you stepped up a little last turn, so you can get to him uh, this turn okay. if you want to. Hold on. I know what I want to do. Okay. The loudest keyboard. I'm, I'm sorry. Wait, where? Uh, spiritual weapon. Where is that? Spiritual weapon is uh, it's just on D and D Beyond. You'll be able to find that one. Um. Okay. So spiritual weapon. All right, so mm -hmm. you you can uh, yeah you can put a spiritual weapon next to this person. Actually, in that case, you can do both a a, a mist touch and a spiritual weapon. Uh, I would like to do that. Okay, so uh, which one do you want to do first? A uh, spiritual weapon. All right, so make your spiritual weapon attack basically. And what form does your weapon take this time? Uh, let's do let's do a music note. Okay, so a treble clef. A, a treble clef. A treble clef appears and slams into this form. Go ahead and make your attack with that. Um, and it is, you do get your plus one bonus for being in a, uh, so mark off your second level spell. Um, it's I think just a five. You rolled a five? Yeah, I rolled a four. Plus one, five. It's oh, wait, no. not a plus no, no, no. one. It's plus your, yeah. Hold on. It's plus your spell bonus and then you get an additional one. So it's it's a plus six okay, right now. Okay, so so it's a yeah a six. So a ten misses. You try to hit with this treble clef, but kind of sees it coming and sort of moves. But you can still make your missed your your missed your uh, missed touch attack. Okay. <gasps> oh. oh! Oh! I thought it was a sixteen. It's a nineteen. Okay. Uh, plus five, so twenty-four. Plus six right now. You're in your fervor, so yes, twenty-five. Plus six. So you, so you hit. Yes. So go ahead and deal your damage. It's another D eight. Okay, let's do the pearly one. That is just a one. Okay, so you manage to hit, but he kind of he he you know you hit him, but it doesn't quite land as well as you would hope this time. As he kind of rolls with it, just just glaring back at you, but all focus is on the woman below him. Um. She is just basically just crying, uh, just begging him to stop. Um, Igneous, your turn. I want to take another shot at this guy. And, All right. Uh, I'm gonna roll. Twenty-one to hit. Twenty-one hits. Roll your damage. 9, 10, 11, 12. 12, damage. great. Wow, you're and, uh, rolling high on those. And then I want to yell, uh, uh, either get out of the way or hit him in the nards. To the, to the girl. Understood. Oh. Um, I will say that you have a sense that, like, 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 this guy can probably take a fair bit of punishment. At some point, you may need to go, like, remove him. You may need to try to get him away rather than just... Because you're still shooting from, like, you know, 40 feet. Are you moving up at all, or you're still shooting from back here? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'll, in that case, I'll move. I'll begin to move up toward you, him. You've, you've gotten a little closer, but you're still just sort of shooting on, on the way. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Um, Dr. Soup, it is your turn. 
and you you do feel like mm -hmm. you need yeah. to yeah i will rush forward okay and take a swing at this thing with my war pick wonderful roll your attack an eight he um i'll say you actually you you swing into him like into his back and you kind of hear this like sound and like the war pick seems to have found no purchase and like as you pull back you just you struck a point that was already missing from his back oh, okay. but he doesn't um, seem spectral he seems no something. he's he's a corpse okay. he's a okay. physical uh bonus action bonus action uh, I'm going to, now that I'm up close to him, I'm just going to say, look, I understand that you seem to have some sort of goal here that you have in motion. I don't know what your sort of deal is with this woman, but clearly, like, you should probably address us here now that you're sort of there. I mean, I'm just trying to sort of kind of create, like, sort of a hierarchy of needs for you, and I'm going to information flood. Okay. Wisdom save? I believe it's an intelligence save. Ooh. Uh, Very good. Yeah, it's he's, intelligence saves. He's good at wisdom saves, not at int saves. Uh, and he rolls a seven. So, yes. Uh, so he uh, he's overwhelmed by what you're saying. He seems to be, like, just like... Idiot, stop, stop. Uh, as you continue just saying all these words to him. Um, so what does that do to him? With your, with so, your information. Uh, so that he will have disadvantage on his next attack roll or ability check in the next minute. Perfect. Okay. Um, and then I'll just be there. With my shield up. Um, and the woman is just like, help, please, please. Um, he's, he's, I, why do you, he, uh, looking down at her, uh, he'll try to attack again. You've taken away, uh, his advantage, so now it's just a flat roll. Um, he rolls a three, which does not hit her. Um, as he's, as he's kind of like, just trying to attack her. Um, and kind of, he, like, glares back at you, like, shut up! Don't understand. She's... But he can't get the words out. Uh, Whiskerina, it is now your turn. So he keeps trying to attack her, right? Uh, he is still trying to attack her. That is correct. Okay. Uh, she's going to do the same thing, and just as lavish and wild. Lavishly? <laughs> if, if you liked that, how about this? Okay, go this. for it. <laughs> All right, go for it. Okay. Uh, 18. 18 Two hits. hits. But, wait, 18? 18, yeah. So that means you rolled wow. a... No. Don't you have a... I rolled a 12. It's a plus 6. Damn it. She has a plus 6. She has a magic item. Don't get a plus too one. excited. Damn it. it <laughs> blew it. Go ahead. <laughs> 3. 3. Very good. You do another 3 points of damage um, with this ghostly beam, but he still is not moving. Uh, Sister Mercy, uh, so you have your spectral weapon up. You can attack... Your spirit weapon, you can attack with that. Um, and you can also, uh, you can also have an action. Can I use the action to do another spell? Yes. As long as it's not a concentration spell, you can use a spell. Ooh. For sure. Yes. So I would like to, oh, it's a cantrip. Oh, okay. So I would like to use my weapon. So your bonus action for, for spirit weapon. Go ahead yes. and roll your attack roll with that. It's a plus six to hit. Okay. D20, right? For that one. Yes. Not something weird. Okay. Oh, oh no! <laughs> Shit! 13. <laughs> Love it. Alrighty. No! Uh, so roll no. a, roll your D13, please. Do, 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 do. Man, we're already like, mute. we're already halfway filled of the clock. That's amazing. Uh, you want to explain it. to the Raiders what's happening right now? Oh, oh, hi Raiders. Uh, yes, um, we have a thing in this game because it's a horror game. If anybody rolls a natural 13, we advance the dread clock. When it gets to 13, <gasps> cool things happen. Um, but we also have to roll a d13, which is a crazy, weirdly odd-shaped die that 
has 13 sides and a round part. In any case, if she rolls a 13 on this, something really cool will happen. What have we rolled, Sister Mercy? Hold on. I haven't... Ooh, 12. <laughs> wow. Um, came close, but we're okay. With that, um, Sister Mercy, so you do your... Go ahead and roll your damage from... That's a D8 of Radiant. Okay. That is a six. Great. All right. So yeah, you guys are starting to kind of cut into this person. Not bad at all. Um, and then what is your action going to be? I would like to cast Strike of Conviction with... Okay. So you do have whatever to... Whatever is around me. You, you'll have to get up into melee to do that. Because that's a melee attack. Okay, perfect. So, um, Sister Mercy, um, yes. you rush up. Uh, and what weapon are you going to use? Is there anything around me that I can grab? Hmm. Oh, the book! Sure, you can smack with the book. That's fine. Go ahead. Um, so go. So basically, to do this spell, um, it's kind of like a kind of like a the other thing. So just make a melee attack roll. So basically, just uh, uh, for you, you would roll. Uh, it's your unarmed strike. Roll your unarmed strike attack. Okay. Let's uh, see. I believe. So roll your attack. Ah, uh, five. five. You you try to strike, but you're unable to do so. But that would be a very good one to do in this case because of what it does for sure. Um, so you, you try to strike, you're unable to. However, now that you're up close, um, a held action goes off. And this woman, who is very small and her features are kind of like um, sort of slightly exaggerated in a way that, that makes her feel almost... Uh, otherworldly um you don't really think she's a human um you think she's some kind of other other creature she she looks very human like but her proportions are much smaller you think she's like a like a gnome for example because she's a gnome um she looks up at you and like tears welling in her eyes she just goes please please help me uh could you please make a morality saving throw i am trying uh yes <laughs> Or, no, zero. I'm sorry. Zero. 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 All right. Suddenly, as you as you look at her, um, you absolutely cannot let anything happen to this person. Um, you are completely charmed by her. You have to help her. You have to save her life no matter what. That's your turn. Okay. Um. It's her turn. She'll hold another one in case somebody comes by. Igneous, your turn. Can you describe, uh, again, where he's standing in the surroundings? So I basically, mean? you've moved up about 20 feet. Sister Mercy kind of, she'd moved a bit. She now is past you, and she's trying to attack him, but she can't. There's this, there's this giant radiant treble clef hitting him in the back he's uh, he's just in a he's in a hallway there's you know closed offices it's night um there's like some windows about 15 feet beyond him uh kind of so like so he's kind of silhouetted against that um and you're just walking up towards him and he's kind of like a t-junction so the hallway continues in either direction uh from there and basically dr soup is also up uh in his business uh and right dr soup you moved up already correct yeah yeah, yeah, I'm right up. And and so Dr. Soup and Sister Mercy are attacking him. Whiskerine is kind of behind you, just flailing her little rat arms. Her her dress is like kind of like like clattering as she moves around. Um, and you're about 20 feet from all this. What would you like to do? Hmm. Can I um would I be able to I would like to attack him and shove him? Can I do that? Or is that are those can I only do one of the above? You can only really, uh, you're only going to be able to do one or the other of those. Um, mm. If you want to shove him away to get him out of the way, that's kind of going to be your action. You'll you'll make a contested sort of strength check to sort of push him aside. Um, otherwise, um, you can, uh, it would be just the attack. Yeah. Uh, would it be, based on looking at him, would I reasonably assume I could shove him out the window from where I am and where he was? 
He's he's 15 feet from this window, so you'd have to go. That would take some more round of pushing him. Yeah, he's mm. he's too too far from it to be. And also, the window's not open. You know, it's not like a yeah, it's like a big bank of glass windows. You could try that, but that would you need to be much closer, and that would be like a big you know movie break through the glass kind of situation. All right, I'm just gonna uh, just go up to him, and uh, I just want to shoot him point blank. And I want to kind of get in between her and him. Under Okay, cool. So try to like put yourself in the mix. Yeah. Go ahead and take your shot. 17 to hit. A 17 hits. Eight damage. Ele- uh, Sister Mercy and Dr. Suit being nearby, it's kind of, it kind of gets like electric near you. And she's just saying, thank you, thank you. Um... Perfect. All righty. And I'm uh, getting a little like, oh, yeah. Hey. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Please, please. Um, all right. Uh, Dr. Soup, you are there in the zone. There's now three of you like directly in contact with this, with this thing. Uh, yes. Um, I'm going to once again, try to hit it with my war pick. Go for it. Since I'm a history professor, I have advantage, right? Even, or do I have to deal damage? Um, I believe you have to have dealt damage. Uh, yeah, you have to. Okay. Yeah, you, you're. Yeah, it is intended that you okay. you hit with the thing, and therefore um, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, then I will just swing the war pick for to start. Okay. Uh, moderately better. Thirteen, non natural. Thirteen okay. hits. He's kind of just a big bag of flesh. You you basically, you swing your war pick and just kind of like put it back in the same part and then kind of, you know, hook it into some flesh next to the hole. Uh, so that'll be uh, six points of damage. Nice. Uh, and then, sorry, I just want to check one thing about my uh, classic technique. Yes, it is a bonus action when I'm in my flow state. Um, so I will make Many a professor's like attack on him now. Okay. Uh, so that is a, uh, sorry, uh, an 18. So that will hit the AC, right? Hits the AC, yes. Um, so I'm going to, just for my allies, I will sort of just indicate this weak spot that I have now found uh, so that any the next person who makes an attack against it can add my professor die to the attack roll. Perfect. Nice. All righty. And uh, it is now his turn. Um, so he's got all these people around. Um, he He's just looking down at her and her sort of eyes are sort of, you know, she's, she's tears in her eyes. She looks so sad. And he's just glaring and he, he just goes, don't you see? Don't you see? Do you he he kind of lunges to attack her once again. I'm going to say, given all the bodies around him, he does not have advantage on this just because of uh, um, the range. He will, however, hit her, um, dealing her another... Uh, let's see. Oof. It's going to be rough. Um, yeah. Oof. Dealing her another 14 points of damage. Jeez. Um, she's in a lot of pain, getting really messed up. Here. Um... Whiskerina, it is your turn. Ghost beam in it once again. I might. You said she's. I don't know if I have any. She's really hurt. She's she's in pretty bad shape. Yeah. Oh, okay, awesome. I mean, not awesome. <laughs> I mean, yeah, not awesome, but like. Uh, oh, that's. Oh, I, right. I know what you're talking about. Yes. Philip, it's awesome. Uh, <laughs> um. I'm going to is remind me is cure wounds. That's the one I, uh, it's close contact. You do have to actually be physically in contact with her. Yes. Um, and we'll say that you get like, you, you can get to her this turn. You've all been slightly moving up as you've done. Okay, cool. So yeah, I'll like scurry over and, uh, cure wounds. Wonderful. As you get within 10 feet of her, please make a morality saving throw. (laughs) She also cries to you. 
That one. That one. Perfect. You, you, so basically, si you and Sister Mercy are significantly more charmed. Like, Dr. Soup and Igneous just want to save her. You two are, like, devoted to saving her. So at this point, you're like, oh my god, I have to secure wounds. Um, To that point, I'm going to say you need to do this at second level. Oh. Okay. So go ahead and click off your other second level slot. Roll 2d8 and add your uh, charisma modifier. All the dice. Thirteen. Thirteen. Lucky number 13. Uh, you heal her for 13 points, and she looks up at you and kind of through her veil and the tears in her eyes, and she says, thank you. Thank you. And you've never felt better in your entire life. Um, Sister Mercy, you're there. Yes. Your, your spiritual weapon's there. This dead thing is like, ah, no! Uh, go ahead. It is your It is your turn. As a bonus action, can I still use my spiritual weapon? Yeah, you as long as you're uh actually that one's not even concentration, is it? No. Nope. It's spiritual weapon is it's too so, much. Yeah. It's too much. Um so go ahead and roll just roll the attack. You just get to do this as a bonus action every round. Uh, add a d4 to it. Oh, add a d4 oh, to your good. attack roll as well. Well, good, because that one was low. Um so that is a nine. With a d4. Yes. And your plus six? Oh. Uh, Thirteen. Thirteen. Oof. Not natural. Okay. Was it, it was, what'd you roll on the die? I think it's a 15, right? Because you... I rolled a seven plus two. Plus so two nine. plus plus six is 15. Oh, so 15. So you got it. You're good. I can't add. All good. Roll your D8. Okay. Uh, three. Three. Great. Um, I am also going to say, um, you are so charmed by her. Uh -huh. You you have to put this thing down. You've already mm -hmm. used both of your second level spells today, but you need yes. to use a first level. You have to inflict wounds. Yes. So go ahead and make another attack roll. Okay. You, it's a plus six to hit. Uh, <laughs> that was a nat one. Ooh, so you burn the spell and you try to hit, but you you just pass through and are unable to do so. Um, she, uh, feeling all of your help, um, she's actually going to uh, kind of feeling you guys around there, and he's a little distracted. She just she just says, "You you monster!" and she slaps him across the face. Uh, she rolls a natural 13. It doesn't do anything for me, but that will hit. Um, so she deals him one bludgeoning damage plus 3d6 psychic. So he takes another eight points. Okay, okay, okay. Um, as she's just, and he just kind of howls as she, as she hits him. Like, bah! um, Igneous, it is your turn. I, uh, I know I still got three shots left, so I'm going to keep unloading on this guy. Understood. Um, I also, I should have mentioned this to you earlier. It's literally your whole subclass. I just forgot to bring it up. Um, you, wait, how many clue points do you have right now? I have, I used one and we haven't had a long rest You yet. haven't had a long rest. Have you rolled any natural ones tonight? I don't think no. you have. Okay, fair enough. Never mind. Uh, you do not have enough clue points to try to make him do pick on someone your own size, so he can't even attack or he has when, to attack you. Yeah. When do uh, when do do our natural ones start to help him? A uh, little higher level. Not. Okay. I think it's like fifth level or something, sixth level, something like okay. that. Yeah. Um. So. Uh. But that's yeah, actually one. that's one of the only things that's still in flux. I I've been considering moving that back down. It's kind of tricky because because yeah. like. It's such a swingy thing. Sometimes it is too huge early. Um, so Igneous, uh, yes, go ahead. But I do have one, because it says it, it's one clue point. Oh, it's only one clue that. point to do that? Yeah, but 
I'm also noticing how strong he is right now. Yeah. And how much uh, HP I have right now, and I would go down. Understood. Then in that case, go ahead and attack. All right. It is is a 16 to hit. This is my fourth. That is your fourth. So 16, you hit him with the lightning. He screams again in anger. Four. A one? I rolled a one. Very sad. Very sad burgers. Um, Very sad. All right. In that case, Dr. Soup, you are up. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to take another swing with this... uh, This here war pick. This here war pick, yeah. Now, you dealt him a damage last time, so you have advantage Ah, on this. Ah, yes. That is, just so you know, Philip, that is the third natural 12 I've rolled tonight. Um... (laughs) It's an 18 to hit. An 18 hits. Um, for 11 points of damage. Um, 11 points of damage, you say? Indeed. Um, man, you don't have any means of a... Make a free medicine check for me. Um, I don't think I'm going to know anything there, Philip. All right. Uh, fair enough. That's a four. Uh, you got your bonus action. What are you doing? Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to attempt another classical technique. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. So that's a, that's a 17 to hit. This time I will have it, have our undead friend here make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. He's not bad at these. A 21. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. all right. That's what I got. Man, he's got one turn left here. Um, she healed him. That's all the diff. Or she healed her. Uh, that's really all the difference. He will attack. All oh, right, he's doing this one. Uh, definitely going to hit a 17. So, uh, it's the... Uh, okay. Oof. She basically, she takes... 15 points of damage so the 13 were healed the 15 this woman's in really bad shape and all of you like it hurts you to see her getting attacked um man uh ooh, 41 uh okay um but he strikes and sort of like sees that she's not there and he's just glaring down at her with this like absolute hatred in his eyes um i feel really bad for him um okay uh, it is now uh, Whiskerina's turn. I don't know if Whiskerina's nearby the thing. We're kinda, I know we're running. Re- I know we're running long for Whiskerina. I'm very sorry. Uh, Whiskerina, uh, what would you like to do? Yeah. You're still just you. You've walked. You're like you're maybe like 15, 20 feet away. They're all just in melee. You just see this thing. What do you want to do? Um. Cool. Uh. Wait. Where you said? Am I still like right with her? Oh. Oh my God. Never mind. Yeah. You did come up. That's right. You came up and healed her. So you're yeah. you're with her. He just undid all your healing by like slamming her again. Um. Why don't you make a free free medicine check? Wonderful. Roll a medicine check for me. Just medicine free, check. Free okay. Roll. Yeah. yeah. Was... Perfect. Wonderful. Uh, thir- uh, 13, not natural. I will say with a 13, you, you believe this person will go down with, with just any amount of damage, really. Like, literally any amount of um, damage. Are you, te- are you telling me oh, I missed the, it by the, one, the, Philip? The missed by, oh, yes. One. Throw it up now. Missed by one. Yes. Uh, so yes. What would you like to do with Karina? Okay. The bad guy. Um, and it's, how is she medicine? What, like, uh, sh- he, he just, can hang in there as long as he, yeah. I, I guess it's, I guess you think that. You think that, yeah, you definitely need to heal her more, but you could probably I, take him I out. I should probably get rid of him. Yeah. Cool. Good to know. Perfect. Uh, Ghost Beam. Ghost Beam. Um, you were actually in melee with him, so that would be a disadvantage. Oh, um, yeah. You might want to, uh, if no, you, it, you could, you could do an do inflict that. wounds yourself at, 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 close, at touch range. Uh, you could spend a spell slot and try and inflict wounds if you wanted to. Sure, why not? I'll do that. Okay. So go ahead and roll your attack. I try I don't think you none of your other weapons are uh, are melee. Um none of your other spells Besides are melee. Besides the cane, right? Oh, you could you could smack him with your cane. Okay, I was thinking of doing that cuz it's not there's not much 
he's he's not well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're, I mean, I'll t- so you're you're uh, if you, I think you should do whichever one you. I've just I'll I'll mention to you. Your I, cane, I think I've decided. Go ahead, then yes. go for it. Go for it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I whip out my cane yeah. and um and just start whacking him like one of my students who messes up Shakespeare. <laughs> You're like <laughs> wrapping wrapping him over the knuckles. Perfect. Um, go ahead and make your attack roll. It's a plus two for you. Uh, 14. A 14 does hit, so roll your d8. It doesn't oh, really gosh. matter, because even if she rolls a one. One? A one is still enough. It's a one plus okay. nothing with your thing, but you nevertheless <laughs> rack him over the knuckles and like you do so and whatever decay has been, like the electricity still flowing, like like his fingers fall off and just whatever animating spirit was still left in this corpse just kind of <sighs> fools living fools to... falls down dead. Um, she just she oh, oh, I'm, thank you thank you oh, thank you all I'm oh it's dreadful dreadful thank you so much are you okay I I I will be Thanks to you. Thanks, thanks to all of you. Thank you so much. She's she's just grabbing like hands constantly. Thank Are you. we still charmed? No problem. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, 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 I will ask. Uh, Are you hurt? I can uh, I can heal you. I am. Yes. If you can heal me, that would be that would be good. But 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 uh, no, I don't I don't I don't need any. Uh, I don't need your Perhaps healing. Perhaps we should get oh, you into you. into our office. Yes, please, please. Oh, I have. Oh, here she kind of she picks up like a she picks up like a bag, kind of like a, a handbag she was carrying. There, thank, thank you so much. I, I thought I was in trouble. Who who are you all? Oh, I am Doctor Arnold Soup, uh, adjunct history professor here at the university. Um, this is my office that works for Well, I guess to be fair, it is myself and Professor uh, the Xena Giant oh, Mole. Oh, thank you. You hear me? Thank you so much. Of I course. needed it. Um, what's funny about this is Igneous Dr. Soup, Whiskerina, this gnome. Sister Mercy, you're like, you're just towering over. Yeah, it's this. a real Gandalf situation this is a real, going on here. here. And there's just these tiny little things all talking. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. She kind of turns to Igneous. Yes. Uh, uh, Igneous, uh, I just want to mention I was the first one on the scene. Uh, uh, I, I started this whole uh, mission to save you, and I uh, just wanted you to know that uh, uh, about my level of involvement. And your name is, my dear. I'm Jenny. Just Jenny. Jenny. <laughs> just Jenny. Just Igneous. Um, <laughs> is that with a with a Y or an I at the end? Why do you ask? It is a why. I just want to be accurate. Yes, I think going into your office would be good. Thank you all so much for helping me. Um, she, uh, at this point, she actually is going to, um, kind of like notice the situation, thinking of the time. She just turns to Igneous and says, You'll help me, won't you? Igneous, please make a morality saving throw. You have disadvantage because you're already charmed. Well, uh, it's a two, so uh, cool, perfect. So you also suddenly feel whatever momentary need you had to help her in that moment is gone. Um, and then, Doctor Soup. After a few seconds. She also says, and you, as you kind of are leading her to your office, you'll help me, won't you? You also have disadvantage on this. Except you don't. Oh, no, it's morality. You do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Morality. Yeah. yeah. That's another 12 and a 20. Uh, so it's a 10. A 10. Oh, right, because you're negative two. You, too, are now sort of in the tank for her. Um... 
I kind of wanted someone to succeed because the coolest thing happens if you succeed, which is you then get to make an insight roll to see if you realize she was trying to charm you. But instead, the four of you have saved this person you suddenly care for so much. And you lead her back into Dr. Soup's office. And that is where, as she clutches this bag, that is where we will end tonight's session. <laughs> Those... It's possible we save something worse than the undead thing that we killed. Oh, it's it's just a those fatals, you know. They get you they get every you. time. Yeah. Even the nuns, we are not impermeable. Oh, I really like charm. the fatal. Um. Well, I'm so glad that happened. Meet just Jenny, a fatal that is actually, um, another. Uh, uh, that's another uh, Kickstarter pledge. <laughs> Uh, fatal in fact um oh yeah so uh just jenny um well thank you all so much for watching this was super fun um we really appreciate everybody being here um we got all sorts of other shows you can check out uh so i'll go through those quickly on sundays at seven not seven thirty um we have here be dragons it's a game where the players are dragons on mondays we have temple flight uh, 7.30, that's a game where the players are superheroes. And on Tuesdays, we have another noir game called Gray in the Dark, where the players are mad at me because there's no color left in the world. <laughs> um, we're running noir in this game. We're running noir in our Tuesday game. Uh, that's because we have this Kickstarter going on. Please uh, check out our Kickstarter. Send it to friends. We are so close to yes. making it to our, our pledge goal. It would be so awesome if we can get there. Yeah. Um, and just have amazing artwork. Uh, I have a bunch of it behind me. You can see it on the website. It's uh, on the Kickstarter. It's super cool. Um, also, thank you to everyone. I think we had some uh, raids tonight. Thank you, Zane. I don't know we if had, you have stuff jotted down, please. Yeah, yeah. No, I got it. We had uh, our, our first action that we had this evening was an anonymous gifter who gave out five community subs this evening. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Uh, I think, I think yeah. you might know who that is. Uh, we had... Okay, I'm trying. Brenninger, Brenninger gave out a, a community sub gift this Actually, evening. Actually, if can if if Brenninger, I've said Brining R. If you're in chat, please tell us how we should how we should say that. If you're still in chat, otherwise, I'll ask you this on the Discord. Um, continue. I'm dyslexic, so oh, I, I in my head it was Bringener. <laughs> so Bringener, uh, bringin, Okay, I get Bringinger. It's, it's Brining R. Brining R. Any Brining continue. R. We also did have uh, a raid uh, from God Mode, a, a party of seven tonight, and then we also had like a, a it was like a manual raid. I think is yeah. that what they, is that what they yeah. call it? That was very cool. That was my first manual raid. I've never been a I've never experienced one. So thank um, you. It was very exciting. Brandon so we had Kirk. we had uh, Jen is online, Pawn plays, George W Ambush, and Avery Berry came through. It was very exciting. So uh, that was that was the action that we had this evening. So thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Thank you, thank so, you so much. much. It's so appreciated. So kind. We appreciate everybody's uh, support for the channel. Um, we're also going to support another channel now. We're gonna we're gonna do a raid over to. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Go ahead. He pronounced in the chat. How? Brin what is it? Brinninger. 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 It's Viking. Brinninger. Brinninger. Okay, Brininger. not Brinninger. Or Brining R. <laughs> Brinninger. Uh, Brin we did our best. Okay. Vinegar. Okay. Yeah, Jarl Brin Brinin. We got it. In any case, um, we're gonna do a raid uh, over to Vancouver by night. Uh, yes. To you guys now. Um, be so before uh, you do it, Philip, do you want to just again, uh, maybe for anybody that might be new in the room, sure. just like a little bit about what you've created here. I mean, what do you mean? Which one? All the <laughs> all the all all the awesome Kickstarter stuff. That oh you yes, created. Uh, we have a bunch of custom classes and races, uh, and you saw a lot of them on display here tonight. Um, uh, races like Rat Folk, Gremlins, Brickborn, Smoking Ones, Mannequins. We we I like how in our horror game we've yet to bring the mannequins in. Um, classes like the Spirit Medium, the Professor, the Gumshoe. It's all five E compatible. Bunch of crazy stuff. Um, yeah, check out the Kickstarter. It's it's a lot of just like noir and pulp, kind of weird fiction inspired stuff. Uh, and very, very unique things that fill like fill gaps or do things differently in a way that are, isn't in the, the handbook. Totally different stuff. Yeah, very fun stuff. So um, 
to that point, thank you all so much for watching. Stick around. I'm going to throw up our closing screen and then head us on this raid. Thank you all for watching. Until next time, have a dreadful night. Mwahahahahaha. <laughs>